Okay, so um, this is part two. Sorry. Hi, this is Stephen Brower from Rant Valley Community College. This is for CSIT 256 Computer Architecture and Assembly Language. And this is part two of the demo for Irvine Chapter 2, which is talking about the general purpose registers and then showing the author's uh, dump regs. Um, so in part one, we got up to this point. And what I want to do here um, in uh, part two is um, for giggles and grins, let me load into DCX5. So load ECX with 5. And let me load DH with negative 5. So let's load DH with negative 5. Now, before I go and run this, um, let's take a peek at this. So when we're loading the minus 5 into DH, so that's these 8 bits here. Well, minus 5, in order to figure out what minus 5 is, well, let's start off with 5. So that's the binary equivalent of 5. So we have 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2. Um, so 4 plus 1 is 5. To get the 2's complement of 5, to, which gives us the negative 5, um, we would start with our 5. So here's our 5. We flip the bits. And so the idea is if there's a 0, we make it a 1. If there's a 1, we make it a 0. So flipping the bits, we have this. And then we add 1. So this here is the result of applying the 2's complement to 5. This is negative 5. Um, if we wanted to double check, um, okay, I got time. It's only two minutes in. Let's, let's try this. This is either be wonderful or a disaster or a wonderful disaster. So if our starting number is 5, And this is our 2's complement of 5. If I add the two numbers together, if I add 5 and minus 5, I should get 0. Well, 1 and 1 is 0. Carry the 1. 1, 0, and 1 is 0. Carry the 1. 1, 1, and 0 is 0. Carry the 1. One, that's a big carry, sorry. One, zero, and one is zero. Carry the one. One, zero, one is zero. Carry the one. One, zero, and one is zero. Carry the one. One, zero, one is zero. Carry the one. One, zero, one is zero. Well, because we're dealing with eight bits, there is no carry. <laughs> uh, yes, the carry bit would be set. Um, uh, you know, if we were... Um, you're following through that way, but when you only have eight bits, there is no ninth bit to then put in the one. So if this was our five here, that was our five. This here, whoops, that was our five. This was our negative five. And so five plus negative five is zero. So this is just verifying that the number that we got um, um, is indeed the two's complement. Well, now if I look at this, if, if I were to now um, convert this into hex, um, the 1, 0, 1, 1, um, well, 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3, so 8 plus 2 is 10 plus 1 is 11. That's B in hex. And these all ones, that's F. So it should be FB. So I would expect if I load negative 5 in for DH, I should see FB in DH. Well, let's see what happens. Yay! <laughs> okay. So there's the FB. Um, and... Um, 
So it's the, the when we refer to the DH, remember it is the upper 8 bits of the lower 16. Well, hex, it takes 4 bits to represent a character. So these lower 4 characters, that's the lower 16. These upper 2 here, then those would be the um, upper 8 bits of the lower 16. That's the DH. So the, the FB was loaded uh, uh, into there. Um, the last thing I want to do for giggles and grins, now I loaded ECX with the 5. I want to, um, I'm jumping ahead, but I want to just show something, and that's a loop. Um, so this is a code label. It is flush left. And let me do a loop L1. And behind the scenes, what happens when we do a loop L1, it automatically subtracts one from ECX. And then it does a test. If the ECX is greater than zero, go to L1. And so what we're doing here is we're going to loop, well, based on ECX, we're going to loop five times. So this is the top of our loop. This is the body of our loop. This is the bottom of the loop. And so with this little loop that we have in here, um, it is looping five times. And so when we look at the dump regs, five, four, three, two, one, we actually see the ECX uh, decrementing. One of the reasons why I'm doing this jump ahead um, is referring back to um, a comment that's made here, some specialized register uses, was that ECX is the loop counter. And so what I was trying to show here is we have a little loop. I had the dump regs inside of the loop. And by ECX being loaded with five, um, then we got five dumps. OK, I just um, truncated the demo to go back to it. Um, and I just want to do a recap, and then we'll call this done. Um, I already know I did a recap, but I'll just do one more recap. The recap is <laughs> um, that we have these general purpose registers, EAX, EBX, ECX, EDX, are going to be four of the ones that we use uh, the most. Um, those references, the E is for extended, that's 32 bits. We can refer to less than 32 bits by using, um, example, AX would give us 16 bits. Um, AH and AL would each give us 8 bits, um, and it would be re referring to a smaller piece of the, the register. Um, and what I was trying to show here was that um, some of the registers are used for certain commands um, holding on to a certain value, um, which is something that later when we are doing looping, we have to be mindful that we can't just store another variable, another value in ECX if ECX is controlling our loop. And so we'll see ways that we can deal with that later, such as um, using the stack, which we'll get to later. Um, way too much comments. Uh, but so <laughs> again, general purpose registers, we can call dump regs to see what's in it. And some registers have special use. That's good enough.